for Ranikashi, whose body was covered by an anthill and by grass and bamboo stakes, because the Ranikashi who had been there for a long time, the ants had devoured his skin, fat, flesh, and blood. Then Lord Brahma and the demigods spotted him, resembling a cloud-covered sun, heating all the world by his austerity. Struck with wonder, Lord Brahma began to smile and then addressed him as follows. Purport by Srila Prabhupada. The living entity can live merely by his own power without the help of skin, marrow, bone, blood, and so on. Because it is said, Asango Yam Purushaha. The living entity has nothing to do with the material covering. Harani Kashipu performed a severe type of tapasya, austerity, for many long years. Indeed, it is said that he performed the tapasya for 100 heavenly years. Since one day of the demigods equals six of our months, certainly this was a very long time. By nature's own way, his body had been almost consumed by earthworms, ants, and other parasites. And therefore, even Brahma was at first unable to see him. Later, later, however, Brahma could understand or could ascertain where Harani Kashipu was. And Brahma was struck with wonder to see Harani Kashipu's extraordinary power to execute tapasya. Anyone would conclude that Harani Kashipu was dead because his body was covered in so many ways. But Lord Brahma, the supreme living being in the universe, could understand that Harani Kashipu was alive, but covered by material elements. It is also to be noted that although, although Harani Kashipu performed this austerity for a long, long time, he was nonetheless known as a Daichya and Rakshasa. It will be seen from the verses to follow that even great saintly persons could not perform such a severe type of austerity. Then, why then was he called a Rakshasa and Daichya? It is because Whatever he did was for his own sense gratification. His son, Prahlad Maharaj, was only five years old. And so, what could Prahlad do? And his householder, the householder ladies in the palace, many of them were taken on by Srila. Many of them were taken on by uh, the uh, whatever he did, he did for his own sin, his gratification. His son Prahlad Maharaj was only five years old. So what could Prahlad do? Yet simply by performing a little devotional service according to the instructions of Narada Muni, Prahlad became so dear to the Lord that the Lord came to save him. Whereas Harani Kashipu, in spite of all his austerities, was killed. This is the difference between devotional service and all other methods of perfection. One who performs severe austerities for sense gratification is fearful to the entire world. Whereas a devotee who performs even a slight amount of devotional service is a friend to everyone. Suri Dham Sarva Bhutanam. 
Since the Lord is the well-wisher of every living entity, and since a devotee assumes the qualities of the Lord, a devotee also acts for everyone's good fortune by performing devotional service. Thus, although Harani Kashipu performed such a severe austerity, he remained a daitya and a rakshasa, whereas Prahlad Maharaj, although born of the same daitya family, became the most exalted devotee and was personally protected by the Supreme Lord. Bhakti is therefore called Sarvopani Vinayamutam, indicating that a devotee is free from all material designations. And Anyabhilasita Sinyam, situated in a transcendental position, free from all material desires. We don't have any more nice pictures. Let me see. All right, so we're hearing how Lord Brahma came back to his abode. Actually, it happened. It happened that uh, we wanted to we wanted to have everybody get the mercy of Lord Krishna, Lord Nishingade. But it's not always possible. Harani Kashipu, anyway, he wants to get benediction from Lord Brahma. And he'd been doing tapasya for such a long time that his body had been eaten up by ants. Somehow the soul was still there among the bones of the body. The skeleton was there because the insects could eat the flesh, they could eat the blood, but they could not eat the bones of Haranyakashipu. So his bones were still there, and then his skeleton was there, and his soul was there, it, because he was attached to the body. He didn't want to leave the body, he was attached to that body. So he was in that body for a long time. He thought, I'm going to, I'm already the son, right? Harani Kashipu, he's the son of who? Um, uh, uh, Harani Kashipu is the son of? Diti. Diti and Kashyapa. Yes, good, very good. Diti and Kashyapa. Yes. Right? There were two brothers, Haranyaksha and Haranyakashipu. And they were both born in the womb of Diti because Diti had gone against the religious principles and coerced her husband into impregnating her. And the result was she gave birth to two demons. And their names were Guyani. So there were two brothers, Harani Kashipu and Haranyaksha. They were both conceived, well, they were twins, really, right? So Haranyaksha, he was killed by Lord Varaha, the Lord in the Boar incarnation. 
And Harani Kashipu, he's still there, and he's trying to become Lord Brahma. He, he wanted to kill Vishnu, he couldn't find him anywhere. <laughs> so he decided he will become Brahma. He thought Brahma is very powerful in the universe, so he thought he would like to get the position of Lord Brahma. So he began to do his austerity. And we're hearing about his austerities here, how as a result of his austerities, all the flesh on his body had been eaten. But still he was remaining there. The spirit soul was still there. Uh, so that, that, of course, is inconceivable to our understanding, how the soul can remain there even in the, the body. There's no skin, there's nothing there, none of the organs are there. There's only the bones. But somehow he was living there. So Lord Brahma, he, he understood that Brahma is doing some... Lord Brahma understood that this demon Harani Kashipu is doing some austerities. So Lord Brahma and the demigods came to look for him. They want to find out this Harani Kashipu. And of course they, they want to give some blessing to him, try, try to discourage him. They want to discourage him from doing all of his austerities because his austerities were having a bad effect in the universe. The whole universe was being uh, heated by the austerities of this demon Aranyakashi. So that, this, this is one reason, you know, why we don't hear so much about Ajamila. Uh, okay, the God? They will take a bus to Pekeliling bus station, and then uh, from there they will take a bus to Lanchang. And then it will take one hour to take uh, one uh, one point five hours to go to Lanchang, and Shimeshwara Prabhu will pick them up from the Lanchang bus station. And the Goku was going to take them. I don't know. I think they were late, and then they left. Huh? The devotees were listening to the class, and then they left. They already gone. They already Alright, so Harani Kashi put in this penance for many long years and it was so severe that all his flesh and blood, all the organs, they were all eaten or they all just dried up because no activity. The body, Prabhupada writes here, the body had been consumed by ants and parasites and earthworms. And when Brahma saw, when Brahma came looking for Aranya Kashipu, they couldn't see him anywhere because where his body was, it was covered by an ant hill. It was all a big ant hill over his body and, they, and his whole body had been eaten so they couldn't see anything, they couldn't see any signs of him. But there was Somehow there was some effulgence which was coming from him. So they understood that he must be here in this place. So Aradi Kashipu was doing this austerity and they say Prabhupada asked the question, said, why was he called a Rakshasa? and a daitya, because rakshasas, you know, they're demons, they eat flesh, they eat human flesh. And daitya means demon, means they're opposed to the Lord. So Prabhupada explains that he's, 
Karatikashipu is he's a Rakshasa, he's a Daitya, because he wants his own sense gratification. He's only interested in his own self. Prahlad Maharaj, on the other hand, is a devotee. And now the interesting thing is that Harani Kashipu and Prahlad are related, father and son. Harani Kashipu is a great demon, and Prahlad, his son, is a great devotee. So it's bewildering to think that, oh, the father is such a big demon, and the son is such a great devotee, they're just completely opposite from each other. So usually we'll say, like father, like son. Right? But it's a, a, a saying, an expression in English. We say, like father, like son. The son will be like the father. But here, Arani Kashipu and his father, Arani Kashipu and his son, Prahlad, are quite different. They're not like, not like each other at all. Mm. Mm. I, uh, Prahlad Maharaj has devotion for the Lord. He's very dear to the Lord. Because, of course, Prahlad Maharaj, the difference is that Prahlad has the opportunity to get association with a devotee. When he was within the womb of his mother, at that time, his mother was taken. At first, the demigods wanted to arrest her and wait till she delivered the child, and the demigods were planning to kill the child because they thought that, you know, the father's a big demon, the son will also be a demon. So better we will kill the child when he's born. Because if we wait till he grows up, then he will persecute us and he will harass us and he will give us demigods a lot of trouble. So they thought, let us, you know, take his wife and when she delivers the child, we'll kill it. But Narada Muni came. Narada Muni, he has better vision. He's a powerful personality. So he could see the future. And he told the demigods, they told them that you won't even be able to kill this child because this child is a great devotee. Narada Muni understood the child was a great devotee. Because Narada had been preaching to the child when he was in the world. He didn't even see the child. The child had even taken birth. But Narada was preaching away to the child in the womb, and he was preaching to the mother also, who was carrying the child in her womb. So that's Narada Muni, that's his compassionate nature, that he wants to speak on Krishna consciousness. So he spoke to Prahlad Maharaj when he was in the womb, and it had a good effect. The child heard very nicely and became a great devotee. Of course, the father didn't know that. The father was thinking, my son should be like me. But because of Prahlad, because of his association with Narada Muni, he become influenced. That is the power of the association. Right? You get, if you get some disease, if you, if you, if you in contact with somebody with a disease, they can give you the disease. Just like there was this one girl, typhoid Mary. They, they had the, there was a big, typhoid was being spread everywhere. Many people were getting, the, and they wondered, where's it coming from? And they didn't know what's happening, how is it spreading everywhere. And they were giving vaccinations, but still people were getting typhoid. And then they found out there was this one girl, one teenage girl, and she had the typhoid. 
and everywhere she went, now people got typhoid. So Prahlad Maharaj had the opportunity to be with Narada Muni. Narada Muni is expert in delivering people to Krishna consciousness. He has many different strategies to present Krishna consciousness. You know, we're pretty limited in what we do when it comes to our preaching. What do we do generally? Well, Harinam Sankirtan, book distribution, prasadam distribution, like that. You know, we hope people will become devotees. But actually, you've got to be much more creative and thoughtful to think how to bring people to Krishna consciousness. And Narada Muni, he could do that. He had that power. He could let people see the future. And by letting them see the future, then they will become more aware of how dangerous their life was, the situation they were in. So, Narada Muni would do many different things. He would meet different people. He could go into palaces and he could meet the great kings and so on. And he could, he could preach to them. And he wouldn't preach directly, just like in the fourth canto. In the fourth canto it tells about Narada Muni preaching to King Prachini Barishat. And King Prachini Barishat had been doing a lot of animal sacrifices. He'd been killing a lot of animals as a yagya. He, the king was thinking that I'll get the benefit of doing these rituals. But Narada Muni came to him and told him, he told him, he said, you know, these animals which you killed, they're waiting for you. Next life, they're going to kill you. That is the law of karma. You kill an animal, next life the animal will kill, become a human, you'll be an animal, they will kill you. And actually when, when people slaughter an animal, they tell it like that, that I'm killing you, next life you can kill me. Is it a good proposition? People want to eat meat so badly, they will talk, they will talk like that. They will chant mantras like that. You know, even here in Malaysia, right? You go to the Kali temple on the full moon, on the dark moon night, and they have a goat and they kill it. And there's a big crowd of people there, and they're all, you know, it's a big event. They all come to see this killing of the poor goat. So, uh, these kind of rituals, that is not very pleasant, a not very pleasant affair. But Prahlad Maharaj, he's a devotee. And his, he, he is fixed in the mood of service to Krishna. So Harani Kashi Poo, however, he's a demon. And his business, he's doing austerities, but his austerities and for his own sense gratification. He's engaging in activities which are just going to give trouble to people. Harani Kashipu doesn't like to see anybody happy. He doesn't like to see anybody worshipping the demigods. He doesn't like to see any chanting of the holy names. Harani Kashipu is a demon and he's against all of these things. He's only in favor of politics, right? And how to deal in politics, what do they do? Well, first of all, they may try to bribe a person. They may offer some bribe. If the bribe doesn't work, then they, they may try to give some position. And if that doesn't work, then they may threaten the person and put them in jail. And sometimes you see political leaders do that. They will take the opposition party and put them in jail. And here in Malaysia they did it, and in India they did it, and so many places in the world. They did the opposition, okay, they're the opposition, put them in jail, put them, and, and 
if, if, you can, if they cannot learn to accept our power, then we will have them killed. That's the ultimate strategy in dealing with the enemy. And sometimes the political leaders are killed. Pakistan, Philippines, places like that, they would kill the opposition leader. And you know, so this is, this is the business of demons. The demons make distinction, friend, enemy. But devotees, we are trained to see how should, we should see everyone equal. Everyone is a spirit soul. To see every, we don't make distinction about friend or enemy. We see everyone part and parcel of Krishna. And we think how to give mercy to them, how to be compassionate to them, how to awaken their Krishna consciousness. That is the, that is the thinking of a devotee. But Harani Kashipu, he is not a devotee, he is a demon. Prahlad, he is a devotee. So Prahlad would always tell his father, you should see everyone equal. Harani Kashipu, he, wa he would make distinction. Who is the enemy? I will have them killed, we'll put them in jail, we'll take them, put them up, we'll give them trouble. But Prahlad is saying to his father, No father should see everyone the same, see everyone equally. So the demons, the daityas and the rakshasas, they have great difficulty to do that. They cannot do that very easily because their nature is different. Everyone has a nature. Right? There are two natures described in Bhagavad Gita. The demon nature and the divine nature. Daily Sampad and Asuric Sampad. If we're not devotee, then we are demon. There's two natures. So the demons, they're always against the principles. They're against people. They're always trying to exploit the world for their self. Right? There's gold. Oh, gold is here. Don't tell anybody, I want to get all the gold myself. Don't bring everyone, don't let everybody know. So, the demon is always very selfish. But the devotee is meant to be selfless. They don't worry about their own self. They're not thinking what's in it for me, but they think what can we do to benefit others? We want to try to help others, to give to other people. So that is, that is important. This, uh, this was Prahlad Maharaj. Prahlad Maharaj is a devotee, he thinks like that. And he wanted everybody to get Krishna conscious. There was one devotee, a great friend of Prahlad Maharaj, his name was Vasudev Datta. Vasudev Datta, Jai Jai Vasudev Datta, he wanted to give Krishna consciousness to everyone. He said, let me stay here and suffer for their sins. He said, all the people, the common people are sinful. I will take their sins. Let me take all their karma. I will stay here and suffer. Let them all go back to Godhead and be with Krishna. I will stay here and suffer for them. That, that's very kind, you know. It's amazing to be like that. To want to suffer for others. When Lord Chaitanya heard, the, heard his devotees speak like that, Lord Chaitanya had tears in his eyes. And he was so pleased with him. And he thanked him for be, having that mood, that compassionate nature. So, unfortunately, most people are not so compassionate. <coughs> most people are the other way, they're very selfish. They think only about their own self. 
They're not big demons like Hadani Kashi food, but they're little demons. Little Hadani Kashi food. Okay? In Satya Yuga, there was only one big demon. But Kali Yuga, there are many demons everywhere. So many demons. All in the bodily concept of life, they all want to enjoy the tongue. They cannot stop eating, eat, so they can't. They, they don't have any feeling about killing animals. We had the program in Patiya and we were having nice prasada. But some people, they're so demons, you know. They, want, they don't want prasada. They want to go to McDonald's to eat burgers. <laughs> this is a, the demon mentality. But the devotee, the devotee is happy to get some nice rice and dal. That's the nice prasada for the devotee. The demons, they will say, where's the meat? Why no meat? There was this one famous, uh, she was a famous singer. And uh, the devotees in the Philippines, uh, they got her to agree to do a benefit concert to help the Filipino temple raise funds. And she did the concert. And the devotee in charge of the temple, one point, he bought her a big plate of Maha Prasada and gave it to her. And she said, what is this? There's no meat here. You want me to eat this? <laughs> it was all fruits and vegetables and sweets. And she said, how, how I can eat this? There's no meat. This is a, you know, unfortunate lady. They have that, some people have that bad luck. They're not fortunate souls. They're brought up eating all kinds of animal food. And then it's, then it's difficult to change them. Narada Muni, could change them. One time he was coming in the forest and he saw the animals had been caught in traps. Magrari, the hunter, had been trapping animals. And he, he, his traps would just torture them. They, they'd be in the trap and they'd be suffering and they couldn't get free and they'd die a slow, painful death. So Narada Muni saw the animals in this condition and he thought, who's done this? And then he saw Magrari the hunter. And Magrari the hunter, he was holding a bow, he was just about to fire his arrow to shoot at the deer. And Narada came. And Narada when he came, and the deer became alert, and the deer ran away. And the hunter was angry at him. That you, because of you, you caused the animal to run away. I lost my bait. I was going to get that animal. I was going to kill it. And you chased it away. So Narada Muni then began to preach to Magrari and he told him, he said, you know, you are killing all these animals. You, you don't know that you are going to get the same treatment. You are giving them so much pain and suffering. And in the future, you will get all the pain and suffering to coming. It will come back to you. That what you give to others will come back. And you give them pain and suffering, you will get the pain and suffering. You will have to suffer. So when Magrari got the association of Narada Muni, and he heard from Narada Muni, he became changed. He said, well, what can I do? My father taught me this. We, you know, we learn things from our family. We are brought up in these kind of homes. And the family, but, but Narada Muni told him, he said, yeah, your father taught you to be a hunter, but now I'm teaching you something better, that you don't need to keep doing that. There's a better life, you should give up this killing. And now, Magari, how will I live? Narada Muni said, you can live by the grace of God. Everyone lives by the grace of the Supreme Law. Don't worry. Come with me. And Narada Muni took Magrari and there was a place where there was Tausi growing. And he said, now you sit here and you chant the holy name. Right? And 
Narada Muni is telling the hunter to chant Rama, Rama. But he said, no, I can't chant that. He said, I cannot chant Rama. So Narada Muni then said, chant Mara, Mara. He said, yes, I can chant that. He could not chant Rama. Rama means the name of the Supreme Lord. But Mara means death. So when, when my granny heard Mara, I thought, oh yes, I like that word. I will chant Mara, Mara. You see? So this was Narada Muni's clever teaching. He got the hunter to chant Mara, 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 Rama. And you get, at, at one point, they, they just reversed the order. Two syllables, Ma and Ra. And Ra and Ma. So in this way, Magrari got the benefit of chanting the holy name by the grace of Narada Muni. And in this way, he became a great devotee. He was sitting and chanting the holy name in front of Tosi. And people would come and bring him food. Someone would come from the village, they heard, oh, a hunter has become a devotee. They said, whoa, really, a hunter has become a devotee? I want to see that. And then when they come to see the hunt, they will bring some rice, someone will bring some oil, someone will bring some vegetables. They would bring different things to the hunter. And Magrari was living very nicely. They said, I have no problem. Everything is being provided by the grace of the Almighty Supreme Lord. So like the Narada Muni was so expert, such a great preacher, he could preach to these different people. And this is how Prahlad became great devotee. So Prabhupada concludes the first part and talks about the, the nature of a devotee. Sāgopadi vinir moktam. That means that he doesn't... Upadis. Upadis means designation. You know, we designate ourselves. Professor, you know, guru, sannyasi, these are all different designations. But bhakti means to give up these different designations. Because the more we're attached to designations, the more we're in the material concept of life. And we have to get free of the material concept. We want to transcend the material concept, to come above that material consciousness. So, Sarva Upadi, give up all of these designations. Don't designate yourself. That is the bodily concept of life. And then, the second thing, Anya Bilasita Sunyam. Anya Bilasita Sunyam means to give up all kinds of desires, like Sunyam. Becoming nothing. Some people want to enter into the void. The Buddhists, for example, they want to enter into the nothingness, into the void. So, Anya Abhilasita Sunyam. Give up all kinds of material desires and spiritual desires. We don't want to merge into the oneness. We don't want to give up our identity. We don't have, we, we have no material desire. We simply want service. That is bhakti. Just simply to do service with love. Loving service. Though that is the, the real mood of bhakti. So one who can work in that way, that he is the devotee and the devotees are always protected by the Lord. Protected by the Lord means? It means that they will always be in the auspicious condition. If they're always in Krishna consciousness, that is auspicious. Protected by the Lord, of course they still have a material body, they're still going to be subject to the miseries of the material world, but they will transcend all of these miseries. They can tolerate them all and go on with their Krishna consciousness. They take shelter of the holy name, 
and they hear the Srimad Bhagavatam and they go on with their life. They don't give up, they don't become disturbed, they tolerate the difficulty and go on with their bhakti, with their devotion. Okay, any question? Anyone? Yes. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Uh, this is about Prahlad. The question is about Prahlad. Uh, what was he before he was born as Prahlad? If, if there's any reference, any facts or, 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 or stories about it. And second, uh, when Prahlad grew in an environment that was so opposed to his devotion, uh, how did he keep himself steady and centered in uh, uh, Krishna consciousness. Everything he did was like, you know, he was like a voice in the wilderness, you know, uh, uh, believing in, in Krishna consciousness and trying to live out that inner uh, uh, calling or, or, or inclination towards Krishna consciousness amidst a very hostile environment. So the second question is how, how did Prahlad actually go through all these challenges uh, when he was just a little, little kid. Thank you. Yes, Prahlad went through all of the challenges because he was always remembering the Lord. His mind was always fixed on the Lord, the Supreme Lord. He was always remembering him. So that is the key to overcoming all the he, Prahlad, he never prayed when he was in danger and put into so many danger. He, he never prayed to the Lord to help him, but he remembered the Lord. He was always thinking of the Lord. And because he was always thinking of the Lord, Krishna took care of him. And nothing, no danger could happen to him. Although his father was trying to kill him, his father couldn't kill him. Because Prahlad was always remembering the Lord. And what was he doing in previous birth before he became Prahlad? Before he became Prahlad, he was the fallen son of a Brahmin. He was born in a Brahmin family and he was fallen. And it said he had a girlfriend and they were fasting. They argued with him. You know, like men and women, young men and women, they argue with each other. So he and his girlfriend were arguing, and they, that they argued and they fasted because they were arguing so heavily. They didn't eat, they didn't want to eat anything. And that night, it was actually in the Shringa Chaturdasi, the day in which Lord Shringa Dev appears. So Prahlad was, he was fasting that night. And he got the benefit of fasting on the Shringa Chaturdasi. And then, and next time he became Prahlad born in the womb of Diti by the semen of Kashya. And it, it's also said that Harangi Kashi was when he was doing Tapasya, he said there were some Narada Muni and another Angira Muni, they came there in the form of birds. And they came there in the form of birds and they were they chanted the name Narayan, Narayan. Harani Kashipu was doing austerities and the two birds came flying around them and they were chanting Narayan, Narayan and Harani Kashipu became agitated and he chased them and disturbed them. He chased away the birds and he, he went home and he went home from his austerities because his meditation was broken by these two birds. So he went home and his wife was surprised. She said, oh, you've come back already? I thought you were going to do a tapasya for a long time. And he said, no, there were these birds coming and they were chanting Narayan to me. Mm -hmm. And so he chanted the holy name also. So because he chanted the holy name, he was able to conceive a child who was a great devotee. Because 
Because he heard from Narada Muni from the book. Yes. So he had the association. Yeah, he heard, bro. He heard from Narada Muni because the mother was kept in the ashram of Narada Muni. All the while her husband was doing tapasya, the the, his wife was in the ashram of Narada Muni. And Narada Muni was preaching and reading scriptures to her. So she was hearing. At the time was also hearing. The children in the womb, very important. When the mother conceives, the mother has to hear a lot because it will be very good for the child. If the mother simply watches television, then the children who are born will have to not have a very good consciousness. You know, sometimes pregnant women, they just watch movies and then the children are born with very bad nature. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, any other question? Okay, thank you very much. Hare Krishna, Shukra Bhakti.